yeah, so it's been a while since we've gone thrifting, huh? Just haven't had uh, a ton of luck as of late. In fact, it's been so long that I've straight up moved and I'm in a whole new place. It's full of echoes and uh, a few games and not much more at the moment. Um, you know what? We still got some awesome thrift stores around. I didn't go too far that we can't go to uh, some old favorite spots. So let's go thrifting. Ah, uh, yes, a delightful day to go thrifting at a thrift store like this one here. And apparently the Lucky Rock is hiring. Great pay and benefits, not bad for a rock. Hey, let's hope the stuff inside rocks too and tucked in between some of these audiobooks on cassette and stuff was this fascinating little package of Molecule's 3D 2.0, the most flexible 3D molecular software, as opposed to all those rigid ones out there. Uh, yeah, this is a thing for Windows 3.1. <laughs> fascinating product, uh, a bit too niche even for me, but you know, interesting to see. If nothing else, I appreciate the copious gradients on the box art. <laughs> that is, uh, well, it's a style. Another style that I appreciate in a completely different way is this delightfully minimalist yet striking package for Final Fantasy XI Online, a game that I know nothing about. In fact, I've never played any of the series. Sorry. I've always enjoyed the packaging for these, and this one, I mean, looks quite nice. Got a book and discs and all these kind of things just packed in there in a very solid feeling box. Also saw a couple of smaller box Age of Empires games, specifically Age of Empires 3 expansions with the War Chiefs here. Admittedly, I've never played the expansions to this game. Uh, this one either, the Asian Dynasties. Yeah, I just never played Age 3 that much at all, despite owning these and the full game and everything else, but yeah. Over behind that on one of these other random shelves were some DeLorean Motor Company boxes. No, that's not what that is. A DMC, I think it's like a yarn company or some kind of crafting thing. Yeah, it's just a bunch of neat little sorting trays packed into these wooden boxes. I don't know. Normally only just see one or two of these at most at a Goodwill, but seven of them, yeah, that kind of stood out. Ah, over in this buggy here, we have a very legitimate luxury bag here from the well-known NM. <laughs> nah, man. Oh, hey, we got one of these desks over here. I always like seeing these roll top things for whatever reason. Yeah, I guess it's called tambour sliding roll top. You know, I always wish these had a little bit more space in there. If I could fit like a little desktop PC set up inside one of these things, I would totally get one. But of course, these were designed for writing, you know, with paper or typewriters or whatever. So eh, they're still cool. I like them. That being said, I am more actively in the market for some 70s, 80s decor and my new place. I'm building kind of a retro room and retro lamps are very much on my agenda, but they gotta be the right kind of old and ugly. You know, not this, this is too ugly. And these other ones are also quite ugly. These are all hideous. <laughs> what in the world? I don't like any of these, but I am looking for a, a specific type of old ugly lamp and old ugly furniture in general. And on that note, uh, <laughs> well, this definitely stood out. I'm not even sure I'd call it ugly, but it's kind of unique, kind of cool. Oh, and apparently somebody agrees. Cool table, <laughs> $20. Yeah, it's just a, a specific kind of like late 80s, early 90s vapor waviness to this. I don't know, it just stood out for sure. Yeah, let's get geared up and take a gander. It's some goodies in the glass case over here. Always worth taking a look at. You never know what you'll see. Like a bunch of books, these Hanes repair guides, maintenance guides. Look at all these, man. There's a bunch of throwbacks in there. Ford Aerostar. <laughs> we used to have one of those back in the day. I think it was a 1990 model. Yeah. Also in here was a rather fascinating sunbeam clock that I admit I 100% would have bought if it weren't $50. After tax, you know, more or less. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it's worth that. I'd have to look it up. Like, it's just not worth that in my mind. Whatever though, the design is fantastic. I love the lack of numerals on there. That 1960s kind of feel to it and the wood grain accents. And it's just a really cool little clock. Oh man, if you've ever wanted to see the city of Asheville in the form of a table, well, here it is. <laughs> I'm not even entirely sure what I'm looking at. It kind of looks like it was never finished or I don't know, but it's apparently an awesome table without the E. Yeah, this is uh, this sure is a thing. 
Continuing around the store or in the random junk section, we do have some random junk and this little bit of artwork that's just on a random book page framed. Yeah, it's another Final Fantasy thing, isn't it? A little mage character, Vivi something or other. And then over beside that, we had a sealed piece of software here. We have Corel Draw Essentials, including Corel Photo Paint and good old Corel Draw. Some classics, unfortunately not really old enough. And while this isn't exactly new, this is from like the very beginning of the Windows XP era. So I'd be more interested if it was from like the mid nineties, but you know, still cool to see. Big box sealed software. Ooh, hey, look at this. Thought this was software at first, but not, it's a board game. Where in the, not the world, the USA is Carmen San Diego, the mystery geography game. Yeah, board game version of the classic computer game, edutainment, goodness. Really curious how it actually plays, but you know what? I'm fine with computer games. Honestly, I would still probably pick this up if it was just straight up where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Where in the USA? I mean, nobody, nobody cares. It's probably in Ohio. Oh man, yeah, here we go. A proper throwback to the 90s magic eye. 3D illusions by anything enterprises. Yeah, I always had to cross my eyes pretty hard to see these, but you can see them, or at least I could. Yeah, it turns out this is the 11th printing from 1994. I had this exact book, but I don't know what my printing version was. It was around 94, so it could have been one of these. Oh, here's a sign of the times. Got N95s just loosely discarded in a basket. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that long ago. These would have sold immediately, even without the packaging. Moving over to the electronics, and hey, we got a beige buddy over here. This is a Microsoft Natural Pro keyboard. Rather yellowed and not really my thing, but you know, I know some folks still like using these. Ooh, what is this? We got a tower of hi-fi stuff, Sony stuff. Always enjoyed these that are packed inside of a glass fronted case like this. Although I don't imagine many of these were super high quality. I don't know, this kind of stuff always feels really cheap when you actually start trying to use it, at least to me. They were always imposing back in the day. Also imposing is this beefy thing. We got a Monroe 7150 calculator with a printer built in and what appears to be a pretty neat VF display. I couldn't resist, I had to plug it in and just see what it looked like. And indeed, it looked like this. Not at all the style of calculator that I collect, but I appreciate those larger teal digits with the segments being all super legible. Eh, it's just a, an appealing aesthetic and pretty much any piece of electronics, really. And there were definitely a number of fascinating items on the back wall of electronics. We'll start with this Samsung monitor. Maybe it's a TV, I don't know, but it had a lot going for it. Not just the white plastic, but all of these inputs. Everything from RF to S video to composite to RCA to VGA, HDMI optical, just holy crap. Kind of wish I'd pick this up now that I think about it. What in the world, dude? I could have used this anyway. Let's take a look at this ugly thing instead. <laughs> what we have here is a realistic clarinet 105 with one heck of a retro font. Yeah, good old Radio Shack electronics. Oh, hey, we got some computer speakers here. Nice and beige JBL models. Yeah, dude. A little more substantial than a lot of the really smaller basic speakers that you got back then, but you know, nothing incredible. Just fun to see. Like these here, which uh, was more interesting at first glance and then I took a closer look and well, eh, just a bunch of eight track tapes stuffed into a random bag. Uh, you know, I always have to take a look in case there's anything interesting and there was not. Mostly a bunch of religious gospel hymns and stuff like that. Not exactly what I'm into when it comes to 70s music. Hey, more audio things to take a look at over here. This time car related. A fancy Sony CD player head unit with the three beam laser pickup. Wow. How early 2000s. And then we have this Kenwood over here. It's a bit more interesting, I thought. Don't really see these often on their own. This is a CD disc changer where you slide the thing open and you got like a cartridge that pops out of here and you can fit eh, five or six CDs or whatever. Just stuff them in there and then change them at will at the front of the car. I always thought they were neat. Oh my goodness, what in the heck is this? <laughs> this phone 
Yeah, you know, it's very brown, but not only that, is that alligator skin? They're like faux gator skin, croc skin, something. <laughs> it's certainly a choice. I just wondered, did it come like this from the factory? Or was this installed by someone later? I mean, it looks pretty intentional from the manufacturer to me. And that, you know what? The past is exhilarating to ponder sometimes. Oh, what is this big old beast we got over here? I got a Sperry Remington SR101 electric typewriter. This looks a lot like an IBM Selectric 3. Opening it up and <laughs> I mean, it's very much that style of electric correcting typewriter with the ribbons in there and that IBM Selectric style typing element, you know, the golf ball which rotates and pivots around depending on which key you're pressing. I just always liked these. They're fun to watch in action. And just down from there on the shelf, saw a couple of Nintendo Wiis just hanging out, looking a little worse for wear. And I saw this controller adapter as well, which I initially assumed might go with the Wii consoles and providing like SNES adapters for it. But yeah, taking a closer look, it's definitely not for the Wiis. Just looking at the connector there and I had no idea what that plugged into. I had to look up what was on the front of there, RDP. Yeah, it turns out that is for the Retro Duo Portable. One of those little clone systems that takes real cartridges and stuff. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with this. I certainly didn't see it at Goodwill. I might have picked it up had I seen it for a good price. Another interesting find over here was this random CD I just saw labeled Microsoft. And yeah, this is a Microsoft MSDN library disc for Visual Studio 6.0. Unfortunately, it was missing the disc itself. Ah, dang it, I was gonna pick that up just out of sheer curiosity, but oh well. And this up here was almost interesting as well. We got an early PC digital camera here, a 3Com Home Connect. Look at this delightful family with the daggum dog with a bow on it, the most light 90s mom you've ever seen. Sharp, clear pictures in low light. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's an early USB digital camera, so you know, 1999, I doubt it was anything worth writing home about. And then this down here, I wasn't exactly sure what the heck it was at first. Thought it was maybe for viewing 35 mil film or slides or something, but no, this is a portable microfiche viewer known as the QuadraScan. You could take microfilm strips and stick them in there and look at them that way without the full-sized huge machines for librarians and researchers on the go. Like, I don't know, there had to have been some really practical use for this to be an entire portable product. And we've got one more Goodwill here. Yeah, just one more, but you know, I take what I can get these days. And this one usually has some interesting stuff inside. In fact, the inside itself is relatively interesting compared to last time I was here. Yeah, it's been thoroughly remodeled with the same slightly darker design that they've been doing at other Goodwills in the area, like brown and black shelves. They haven't put down the faux wood floors like they have at some of the others, but still looks kind of nice. And of course, I'm looking for ugly lamps and I found some ugly lamps, but man, this is, this is, this is way uglier than just about any lamp I've ever seen. This is like a purse. I don't know, what were they going for here? Looking at it, touching it just makes me want to sneeze. <laughs> okay, well, moving on. Yeah, check out some of the benefits of the remodel. They got these nice areas sectioned off for specific collections of glass and mugs and just looks a little more organized than it used to until it's been here for a while and nobody cares to organize it anymore. And you know, I'm not just in the market for ugly old lamps at the moment. I'm also looking for some ugly old furniture, but it's gotta be the right kind of ugly furniture. This isn't quite it. Nasty floral patterns are okay, but these just aren't the right ones, man. Even though they are just a dollar today, <laughs> that's a, a deal. I don't know, it all kind of smells like musty cat odor and moss, but hey, it's a dollar. And hey, they got a little end cap of keyboards now, and I see one beige one, or kind of white beige, I don't know, it's yellowed. There's nothing at all special about it. In fact, this is about the most generic Windows 95 keyboard. In fact, the model number is Keyboard Win 95. <laughs> That's how generic it is. But anyway, I always gotta take a moment to admire a keyboard that is even slightly older. Here's a selection of LCD monitors, as always. This one in particular stood out because of its wonkiness. It looks like it might be a rotating one, and indeed it is. An HP L1750. 
looks like a 15 incher perhaps it's got one of those bases at the bottom i don't know if like a thin client goes down there or what but uh yeah i've got a rotating monitor right now that i'm quite happy with but you know it's just neat to see one oh my goodness that shade of orange could only come from like 40 plus years ago what we have here is a radio shack ec 3002 calculator in the box goodness i've seen one of these calculators before goodwill but never the box and it seems to be in really good shape too all things considered it's even got the little protective cover with it dude check out that original price sticker too 89.95 in 1980 which is around 330 dollars now wow i don't really collect calculators of this type but man it was just awesome to see the packaging i approve with force Okay, what do we got here? We got a Dell Dimension something or other documentation. Is there any software though? That is the question. And opening it up, the answer is yes, although it mostly just seems to be Dell Restore CDs. I mean, hey, definitely useful to someone, just not to me, as well as a Microsoft Works suite. Yeah, I was hoping for some games. Also a benefit of the remodel, check out their DVDs and CD section, you know, just media in general. It's looking quite stocked they used to have all these spread out all over the store now they're in one place not terribly organized or anything but at least the media types are generally grouped together although you do see software and games and stuff mixed in as per usual we got day of defeat here for the pc as well as zoo tycoon 2 the complete zookeeper collection yeah i've already got all these individually but still it's a good collection of gaming they even had a few PlayStation 2 games and a Wii game tossed in here. I just don't see these very often at all anymore while thrifting, man. Those days are long gone when you could just find tons of these all over the place for like a dollar or two. Nah, not anymore. You're lucky if you find a few sports games and even luckier if they have the discs. Up in amongst the audio CDs, I found a couple of loose PC games in here. Mist Masterpiece Edition and the Descent 1 and 2 Definitive Collection Pack, which, of course, was missing the discs. <laughs> it sucks to see these actually show up in a store, and then they don't even have the discs, you just know that's going to get thrown away. And around the other side, filled with primarily VHS tapes, as well as vinyl records, with a Def Leppard album down here definitely standing out. Of course, it's missing the actual record. What the heck? Didn't see any laser discs either. Always like going through the records just in case, but nope. Over in the puzzles and board games was a fascinating collection of slides, or at least the carousels that would have held them, all from the 1970s. I mean, these people were going around from Alaska to Michigan to Canada to Oregon, Washington, California, Vegas, and just all kinds of places. But yeah, none of the actual slides were in there, which, I mean, I get why they would probably just get rid of them, or maybe they were got rid of before they even came here. But Alaska, there was nothing to see here. And there's an entire shelf dedicated to Christmas goodies. And check this out. This is one of those fiber optic Christmas trees I used to see much more of back in the early 90s. <laughs> I don't know. They were always kind of oddly appealing, but extremely tacky in hindsight. Just to see one of these in the box is an odd nostalgic treat. Oh, yeah. Look at this retro drill. That mustard color, classical design. Uh, what really got my attention, though, is this power cord. <laughs> it's just like, it's got to be the most comically, uselessly short power cord I've ever seen on a power tool. You'd need an extension cord. Like, even if you're up against an outlet, it still seems too short. And then finally, on my way out, I noticed an abnormal number of pink shirts and had to take a look when I just see so many of the same thing. Yeah, they're all Walt Disney World shirts. And then as I kept looking, yeah, look at all these. Cars Land shirts, just dozens of them. Disneyland Resort shirts. How did all of these end up in a thrift store in the Western North Carolina mountains? Fascinating. Maybe somebody with more knowledge of Disney goings on can let me know how this might have happened. And yeah, that is about it for this episode of Thrifts. I, yeah, I didn't buy anything. I seriously haven't run across much that I would want to buy? I don't know. It's just been a very dry season for thrifting finds lately. And honestly, I've got enough stuff. <laughs> so, you know, even though there were things that I could have gotten, you know, were kind of interesting or whatever, I, I, I just, I don't really uh, feel hugely compelled to do so, especially as I'm moving into a new place and being confronted with enough stuff anyway. 
But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I know it's been quite a while since we've done this and you know, it's just kind of par for the course. And uh, I really wanna do more of these if I ever get the chance to do more, but it really does rely on luck while out thrifting. And yeah, we'll see how it goes as I'm in a slightly more convenient spot to some stores and less convenient to other stores now, my new place. So uh, we'll see. As always though, thank you so very much for sending in your requests for more thrifts and asking whether it's still going. And you know, yeah, it always is. This is not a show that I plan on canceling. I just wanna keep it going as much as I can. And to that end, seems obvious y'all are still going out and finding cool stuff and sending photos of your finds my way as you're seeing here. It's so much cool stuff is still out there. If you get there at the right time and it's the right price and it, it's a lot of luck more so than ever these days, but so it goes. And I hope that this was fun to watch as well. Till next time, whenever that may be, thanks for watching LGR Thrifts.